Hey everybody, thanks for joining. This is Tyler Yonke, the Between Two Wheels podcast. Today we're doing a special edition episode where we talk to Sean Bagley. He's a local Masters racer and also a promoter. He's putting on and bringing back the uh, Michelob Ultra Sequoia Cycling Classic. That will be going on this weekend. Sean gives us a breakdown of the event itself, kind of some of the history and how he got involved in cycling. In addition, on the line, we also have Jeff Prince, and he is a local promoter in Southern California. He puts on the CBR series, and he's also a racer and has an extensive history with, with bike racing himself. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. This is the Between Two Wheels podcast. We're just mostly Northern California. I know, Jeff, you're you're down there in Southern California. And, Sean, you're kind of in the central area, and you mix between the both. So this is perfect. Um, why don't yeah. you give – I'm going to start with with, with uh, Sean. Give me a little idea of who you are. I know you will race uh, Masters, and you're promoting the, the Michelob Secure, uh, Sequoia Classic. Uh, give me a little breakdown of who you are, and then we can go to Jeff and then kind of mix in about the race. Sure. So – uh, I'm from Visalia, um, Cat 2, race mostly Masters, occasional 1-2 pro races, but um, because of my geographical location, I'm able to race both NorCal and Southern California, and so I get to see the best of both worlds, you know, just have to do a little bit of driving, but I love racing, so I don't mind, and I actually like racing in both areas, it's just, it's a perfect combination for me. And, and Sean, how long have you been in racing itself? I know you're doing masters and you're you know up there with the same age I am approximately, but how long have you been doing racing itself? So I actually started racing in 1991. Uh, I saw the Visalia Classic in 1990, downtown Visalia, and I saw the finish of the Criterium and I went, I've got to do this. <laughs> I saw Jonas Carney and Roberto Gaggioli just duking it out for this vicious sprint and Gaggioli hooked Jonas Carney into the gates and they protested and it was like a big to do and I was just like completely hooked and so I got my license the next year they didn't even have cat fives when I started it was cat four and I started my first race was the Orange Cove road race and I got dropped on the promenade but then I did the Sanger criterium the next day and got seventh place in my first race and I was completely hooked after that so are you from originally from Visalia Yes, I moved here my senior year from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Okay, so this race that you're now promoting is a big deal as far as you're getting you into cycling in general. Yes, yep. Okay. Uh, That's why we wanted to bring it back. We brought it back in 2015 because nobody it had been it had been kind of dormant for about 7 or 8 years. Now, one thing I I I've got some personal history with that race as well. You know, Gaggioli actually was one of my teammates back uh, in the late 90s for a while. Huh. That you mentioned that. Oh, and, nice. But yeah, we actually did that race. I did that race multiple multiple times uh, when I was out in Colorado, and we'd come out here and do that. And it had part of the the road race mixed in with it for that weekend. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, so I I'm really interested in you know kind of getting back into it, and and I'm glad to see it come back in. So Jeff. Give us uh, where are you at with cycling. I know you, you promote the CBRs, but how did you get involved in cycling and kind of what's your history? Um, I'm originally from Ohio, and uh, I moved out to California in probably about 97, 98. I've been competitive uh, sports, kind of like Sean, um, ever since probably about 91-ish area. Um, came out here as a professional triathlete, and uh, – Worked my ways up when I came out here from a five to a one in a year and um, got to travel all over. Raced Roberto Gaggioli at uh, Redlands, and, of course, he kind of didn't – I don't know if it was a hook. He kind of got (laughs) underneath my arm and lifted me up off my bike. But uh, he was aggressive, (laughs) and he knew how to get in and win. And, you know, you just – Steve Hag told me, he said, just bring your leg out next time. He won't do that. So, yeah, we got uh, (laughs) – came out. Now I've done – did a lot of the races um, all up and down the coast in California, which I love, and uh, thought we'd uh, try our hand in promoting. We did the Great Park for years, which is in uh, Orange County. It was a Thursday night, kind of like a El Dorado series type deal. And then when uh, Chris Lotz was thinking about getting rid of CBR and all that, uh, I told my wife, I said, hey, yeah, interested? We're putting this on. Let's uh, make this move and uh, really try to build – build upon a little bit more than what Chris had. I said, I think we can really bring 
our education into it because we're both teachers. I said, really bring that into uh, cycling and really build it up a little bit more. So give me uh, us up here in the north in the northern part of California. We we know of CBR mostly for me through Sean's videos and when he goes down there. What exactly is it? Is it a race series and how often how many of them do you put on for the year? Um, so we put on actually two series. Um, we put on the main series, which is uh, seven races um, from the span of the end of January to the uh, end or middle of June. Last year we trickled a little bit into July. Um, so that's a seven race series. We have two jerseys that you're able to go for, which is the most aggressive rider, but that's more like a points race. Whoever comes across the line first gets a point for every single lap. It's really changed the dynamics this year at our events, and it's really cool. Yeah, um, well, for sure. And the second one um, that we put on is the upgrade races in October, November, December, which are also a huge hit for people to get their you know, last upgrade points of the year before yeah. the new year rolls around. That's that's pretty cool. So what is your involvement with uh, coming up and helping Sean out in, the, in his race? So um, I partnered up with uh, Dana Point Grand Prix. Dana Point reached out to me, and um, we all win, you know, when we start to get more people involved. And uh, I worked first with uh, Ernie Sanchez with the Marietta, and we exchanged preems and everything else like that to get the racers to go to that venue and vice versa. Talked to Russ Ames at the Dana Point Grand Prix. And then after I talked to Russ, I was like, why don't I just reach out to Sean and uh, um, say, hey, let's get them involved. Let's start really doing this. And, uh, you know, we all win. Absolutely. Yeah, so Sean, take us back. Uh, now, just a little bit of the history of the Sequoia Classic. So... Last I did, it was late 90s, and then took some time off of cycling myself, came back, and it wasn't around. So, And then the first year, I remember, was what? But how many years ago did you start it back up? And were you the person that started it back up? All right. So um, the, the original crew that put the race on, I believe it started the first year was in 1986. And it went full, it went full gas every year and was like pro tour level, or I should say NRC tour level um every year up until 2002 and then the kind of like what happened with Merco, it just got to be too much work and the existing group that put it on decided we've had enough and they stopped and so then fast forward to 2006 it was brought back i actually was part of bring help bringing it back in 2006 with with a different group of people than are doing it now and we brought it back for two years and then the tour of California came in, and then the city didn't want to be involved anymore. They wanted to put all their eggs in the tour of California basket. Mm. So then it went away for a few more years, and then we resurrected it again in 2015 with the current group of guys, which is myself and Eric Henson and, and a really strong group of volunteers. Now, this kind of goes to both and, – and just interested here of, you know, is there a – an amount, look, you have these local races, and now, Jeff, you're putting on the, the series. Sean, you're putting on this good race. And is there an, an extent to which you get big enough where the infrastructure and everything involved almost makes it too difficult to continue the race? Kind of like what you were making it sound like. For and Sean, you can go, and then Jeff. Okay, so, I, I mean, cycling in California in general has just started to really dwindle. Um, I know Jeff had touched kind of touched on this in a Southern Cal podcast, which I just listened to. And I agree with them 100%. You know, you've got these gravel grinders, Belgian waffle ride is this, this coming weekend is our only competition down South, but they have 1900 pre reg. I mean, Jeez. that's huge numbers. Yeah. Um, you got these grand fondos that have up to 3000 riders and you know, the criteriums are kind of dying out. I don't know if it's the cost or if USA cycling raised the prices you know, there's kind of a, like Jeff had said, there's a multifaceted kind of different group of reasons why cycling has ended or is, is kind of dying. But um, the community in Visalia has really been involved with this race. They always have been. And that's why Budweiser got involved because they really wanted to do something for the community. They don't really care as much about the racing as much as I do. They just want to have a great event that brings the community out. So. I'm kind of looking at it from both sides where I want to make a great event for the racers, 
but we also want to put on a great event for the community. So that's where it kind of gets a little tricky. Yeah, so Jeff, I, I did not listen to that podcast yet, and I will do it. Sean had okay. sent me to, but um, and maybe you're going over ground you've already gone through here, but maybe you can talk to me about that because I see that quite often. You know, the and maybe it's different with you two both being former racers to the extent that you see a little bit different aspect. But um, is there a, is there a problem with becoming you know successful to the point that you're only able to tap so much in the criterion market? Well. I think, uh, I mean, we've, we've increased ridership by over 40%. Mm. I mean, Sean's, Sean's seen it. Sean's yeah. seen that, you know, from what it was to now, I mean, we're hitting, you know, 700 numbers, which is crazy. I mean, right. and it's, it's really, but again, I think where Sean, myself, Dana Point, um, we put on an event atmosphere. Um, we, try to very focus on that community, that family atmosphere that, you know, so, um, yeah, we've, we're just, we're trying to do what, uh, the Sequoia cycling classic has done. What, uh, Dana point grand prix, what we bring is that event atmosphere. We bring that, um, community involvement, the families, and we're starting to see more of that at CBR, you know, how do you got cornhole for the kids. Well, and, I was just going to say, I don't mean to interrupt too much, but how do you bring that? So you try to make it fun So because before, you know, when I was racing, it was kind of like that. And we went through a little lull and it was like, you know, guys with their families and everything else and the wives would go and, oh, this is boring. There's nothing yeah. for us to do. Um, you better just go race yourself and but be back by noon to mow the lawn. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> yeah. so now, yeah, we've all seen that. But now if there's other things offered, so like Sequoia Second Class can do this, we can do this. We offer food. So, no, go grab a taco. You know, go get, have a beverage. Go um, really um, enjoy yourself. And like I said, I've got cornhole for the kids. Eventually, I want bounce houses, you know, and offer more kids races. I want it to be that family atmosphere. My wife always likes it when there's a beer garden. So maybe that's – yeah. You, back back in the yeah. day with uh, Visalia, when we would show up there, I remember the, the, they had a newspaper, you know, talking about the race, getting the crowd involved. And I think this was their idea of how to bring the crowd in was – we are putting bleachers on turn six because that's where all the crashes are. Is that, is that something <laughs> yeah. you're going to continue to do, Sean? Yes, absolutely. We call it crash corner. <laughs> Get out of here. Turn six. Yep. But, well, that, you know, and, and that's where um, my my big title sponsor from Budweiser, his name is Derek Mendoza. Um, he, he really loves the racing part of it because he raced jet skis. And so... He put, he's the one that put the picture of the huge crash from the Harlem Criterium up on social media because he wanted to bring it for him. It was to bring the community out, hoping, hoping that they'd want to come see some crashes. And I know the cyclists don't like to see that, but it was that was purely from his marketing side, which I kind of found kind of funny. Nick Fievel didn't think it was very funny, but, you know, <laughs> as, from the racer side, I totally get it. But Derek, you know, he's given us thirty thousand dollars, so I kind of let him do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> well, even from even from the racer side, right? That's uh, we don't necessarily like it, but that's that is one way that we kind of show the family how tough we are in a sense. Hey, look, you know, right. the crash corner, and we're out there mixing it up. Uh, that at least that used to be good when I was younger, but I don't know if it's so good at my age anymore. You know, I learned something from uh, Jeff Golan from Chico, and we got a an insurance. Uh, not an insurance, uh, insulation um, sponsor that's going to bring these huge, giant cotton insulation bales. And we're going to just, we just build up turn six. So if anybody does crash, they don't really get hurt. They just kind of bounce off these giant cotton bales. No, is that for huh. sure? Are, are you legit on that one? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Broken drum insulation. They're going to bring. Oh, how funny. Bring, yeah. No, so. You know, there's always different <laughs> ways and different things to, to try to bring the crowd out. Back when I'm, Harking back to all my my times going doing Visalia way back, we had they had um, uh, speed speed skating <laughs> along yeah. with the race like during uh, between races. Is there okay. any uh, callback for something like that? You know they did do that one year in Visalia. They had a speed skate, yeah, a little speed skate criterium, and they also had a tandem criterium, which I think they had like six or seven bikes that showed up that did it. That was pretty fun to watch. <laughs> But we're doing something this year. It's a, it's a tricycle race where they're going to have different people from different businesses around town that are going to 
put one rider up on a tricycle, and the winner gets $1,000 for the sponsor of their choice. Huh. And they're promoting that on a local country, country music station. So how far do they ride? It's going to be like, I wanted to be 200 meters, but they thought that would be too far for some of the riders, so they, they shortened it to a 50-meter sprint. Oh, wow. And is that before or after the alcohol that they consume? Do you make them do that? <laughs> Probably after. <laughs> Hopefully. So both of you guys, so uh, how much – now, now Sean's doing one race here. Jeff, you do a bunch. How much of your personal time goes into this, and is it is it worth it? Um, Sean, you want to go first? or Sure. Um, you know, Je- Jeff's kind of – I'll let him speak to that, but his is his is a not so much of a downtown event. Um, it's still in town, but it's not a downtown event like ours. Ours requires a lot of regulation hoops to jump through with the city, getting all of the businesses to sign off. So doing it once a year is feasible. If I had to do it multiple times, it would be really, really hard and exhausting. And yeah, what about it, you, Jeff, for like all the logistics? There's a lot that goes into it. Very similar to Sean. We also put on the Ladera Ranch Grand Prix that will be happening June 24th. Um, and that's a downtown that's right in the heart of Ladera Ranch, California. So the logistics are still the same. You got this guy. The fire has to get involved. These guys got to get involved. These guys. And uh, road closures here and et cetera. And still contact the businesses. Same with the industrial park. I still have to reach out to all of the businesses every single time and let them know what's happening. Um, and again, contacting the hospitals. There is there is a lot. It is, and since we have so many um, over and over, it, it does. And my wife and I are both full-time teachers. Sometimes that Monday after that race, we're going in looking like zombies. It's yeah. pretty, because I get there quite early in the morning to set up the the barricades and the blow up arch and all of the sponsors. And then we have volunteers that we can't do it without volunteers. So same with Sean. We can't, yeah. both of us, the volunteers are so important and we are so grateful for all of the volunteers that help. We really are. And, you know, so, so the logistics of planning it is very similar, just a little bit more often. And earlier in the year, I kind of made the mistake um, of scheduling. I didn't look at <laughs> The uh, months side by side, so the first three races were two weeks apart. Oh my gosh, I thought I was going to yeah. shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was very difficult to juggle. How do you? So it's it's like being it's like being a wedding planner. <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, without the all the happy endings, I guess you get a few of them. Hey, so w- <laughs> with with um, kind of you guys as the promoters, how how is reg fees? And how has the trend in those been uh, for the last several years? And um, is this is this a money making business? Is this a money losing business? And then if it's a money losing, I mean, what's wrong with you guys? Not financially, what's wrong with you? But mentally, what? <laughs> I think Jeff's doing a little bit better than we are because you know he's developed a really amazing product. Then he has geographical. You know, it's kind of like with Red Kite. You got most of the riders within an hour radius of his races. He's going to do well because he's got an amazing product. I struggle because of geographic location of Visalia. Yeah. You know, not many people want to drive three hours from L.A. or two and a half to three hours from the Bay Area in Sacramento to come over for a one-day crit where they may only race for 60 minutes. You know, So m- the way I have to get around that is to put on such a good product that it makes people want to come back and they're going to talk about it. And that's pretty much all we can do. I was thinking too, also with you, Sean, that like when we were talking and brainstorming, you do be doing some house stays and stuff like that, that'll still yeah. be able to give people the flexibility that they can come and, you know, stay, you know, at somebody's home, that's going to be pretty close to it. And, uh, you yeah. know, that might be a awesome option. Yeah. When we did, yeah, we Visalia, do have a pretty, pretty large group of families that love to host riders and we've connected quite a few already this year. Yeah, when awesome. I did by Sally, we, we there was a guy we met, and he had he had housed some UC Davis kids, and I I had contacts with him. You know, I went back for over what five years or so, and we were always staying with him. 
was some like some uh, drug task force guy out of town. So it, it made it easy. But yeah, getting the community involved like that. Now, Sean, you've got the race where you've got to make a big spectacle and, you know, prize list can really draw people in for a one day. Uh, yeah. Jeff, how is yours in comparison? Is yours more along the lines of it's a series, it's a continuous thing, or do you do you end up putting a big prize list together each and every race? Um, I try to be pretty competitive. I think I I think I'm pretty fair with uh, um, the entry fee. Um, we've been keeping it. We keep it at uh, thirty five dollars pre reg and mm. four, uh, ten bucks uh, for late fee, which is cheaper than uh, the NorCal stuff. Yeah, um, yeah sure. And um, if my riders hit, uh, I uh, so last year what kind of bothered me was we would always do our flyers or I'd, promoters in the past, et cetera, would do their flyers and then they'd put a little asterisk at the bottom. If this percentage of the field would not have this, the prize purse is cut in half. I looked at it different this year and I wanted to do positive reinforcement rather than negative. So I said, if there's any field with 70 riders, I double the purse. Hmm. Every, almost every single yes. race has been double. Yep. So the master's purses are getting $400. So the only other Masters race that I know that's getting $400 is probably Visalia, Dana Point, the big ones. But other than that, the local ones, they're not putting out $400 a race per Masters category or any of the other categories. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sean, what about your prize list? And I know before they'd had, uh, you know, a guitar. I know uh, Matt Chatlong won a guitar on the, one of the races there. But is that still going on? And what does your prize list look like? Uh, we do the guitars for the pro men and the pro women, and that's going to be continued. Um, we're also doing a trophy, um, T-shirts, and then cash. Um, we have custom-made trophies that are used in local Sequoia woods, different different types of woods from the from the area that one of our local um, he's a, a carpenter kind of donates to us, and then Guy Van Nata from Fresno makes the trophies by hand. So that's always kind of cool. I think people will remember a trophy more than a hundred dollar check. Sure. Um, so we do, we do the cash, but we also want to do something special. I know Jeff does some amazing medals and and um, beer mugs and things like that, which are really cool too. And people remember that stuff. And we they try do. to they... keep our our entry fees pretty <laughs> low as well because I I think riders appreciate that. We're not quite as low as Jeff. We did forty and then forty five for the pros, but um, we're still quite a bit cheaper than a lot of the races up north yeah I, I know back in the day when you're you know traveling younger traveling the country and trying to just win money for crits the money was important and now you know it's you're an adult you have your job you don't care as much and uh, sometimes it's just the the stuff that i could pass on to my kids <laughs> that i get at a race yeah. uh so how does the registration look for this weekend sean um right now we were at 168 which is pretty low but I think most racers are procrastinators, and I'm hoping mm-hmm. I'm hoping it blows up over the next couple of days. I know the Mike's Bikes team hasn't registered yet, and there's a bunch of SoCal guys that are coming up. Sharon Smith and Rasan Bahadi, they're bringing their team up. So we're going to have some pretty high-caliber racers here. Yeah, I know I know they've uh, they've been planning on going out there. Um, uh, Jeff, are you coming up to the race, or are you just uh, helping from the sidelines? Unfortunately, I have to help from the sidelines. My wife, uh, we're kind of, uh, she grounded me. <laughs> yeah, Evans. So, totally just, it, uh, You know, we try as uh, as much as possible to try to go as much, you know, to the other venues. And it, but uh, that's just a little tough. We've got a little two-year-old that it just kind of hamstrings us a little bit. Yeah, it, it makes sense. It, what are some suggestions you have or other ideas for promoting? I know you said, you know, getting the community involved. Um, any other things you have that you're kind of on the precipice of pushing out? Uh, I want to go ahead. John. Oh, uh, what I wanted to say, at least from my perspective is what I've done with Jeff is we communicate and we try not to, we accidentally ended up on the same weekend last year and mm-hmm. it kind of sucked for both of us because we both lost out because a lot of the riders that would have come up here definitely wanted to do his and vice versa. I know I would have loved to have gone down to view his race because Seth Davidson had donated a whole bunch of $100 preens, and it was a really awesome race, and I was really bummed to miss it. So this year, we definitely communicated. Jeff actually moved his race a week prior, you know, just to accommodate us so that we wouldn't do that again, and it actually worked out well on their schedule in SoCal, but in NorCal, I just can't, I cannot get 
the promoters to work with us in that way. And then we end up having a competing race against us in Auburn, which, you know, I, I totally understand with Auburn, you know, they, it's a downtown crit too. And I would have loved to have gone up to do that, you know? And so it's just kind of a bummer. There's just so many races in NorCal and I just wish the large races would be able to communicate with each other and, and have just one big race per weekend. Yeah. You know, actually uh, that's, oh, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, communication is definitely the key. I think that really helps out a lot. Um, <clears throat> we're a big fan um, of education. Like I said, we uh, um, what, we're, what we've started off with the BRP with the beginner racer program. Um, I'm very I teach calculus for a living, so I'm very data driven. And uh, you know, we've hired on uh, a level one coach with Chris uh, Jennings, and uh, um, it's been it's sold out every single time and it just it's a curriculum base i don't know if you know or are too familiar with uh brp are you at all tyler not not for, not too much no go ahead well we so it started that in norcal with the um early bird oh early okay bird yeah, yeah 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 okay similar and, and that's actually where sean wilson and chris had actually got a lot of their material from from larry nolan oh uh, well from larry awesome yeah, yeah. okay so yeah we we're, we're totally big on the education so i've looked at all the data and all of the riders, and, and I thank Sean all the time because he definitely helps out as a mentor um, for this because the riders look up to people like Sean and, you know, all the riders at Dave Casel and, you know, all the local kind of superstars. Um, but I look at the data, and all the ones that are doing the BRP are doing the Cat 4s, and they are doing the Cat 3. So we're getting yep. them to stay because they feel comfortable. It's not like when all three of us started racing – Oh, you're racing a cat five race. Good luck. Don't crash. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, that was the stigma. Yeah. It was always like that. So now they feel educated. You're able to teach them that, Oh, you see this guy, he is a little bit of a squirrel. Uh, you might want to stay away from him, you know, and they, they teach yeah. you the skills that took us years to, you know, you lift up your knee when you go to a right turn, you lift up that right. So you're able to make the turn. You don't pedal through this or you don't. So it's all these skills that makes it, and you don't have to be a bike racer. That's the best thing. I mean, but it's getting yeah. them into it, you yeah. know? So I think if other promoters, you know, start to do, and you can do, you don't have to do the whole like BRP program like we're doing. Cause there's another one that we do at Ladera ranch, which we nicknamed. We kind of started that last year, which we call it the technical skills clinic because you know, it's a very technical course at Ladera ranch. You're, you're going from three abreast, to a single lane road, so you got to know how to navigate that. Yep. These skills are able to teach them how to do that. What line is the best line to take? And it's it's awesome. Yeah. So a uh, quick thing here, just was thinking about. So up here in Northern California, so I'm 46, 47 race age, and it seems like my category of around the 40 to 47 ish is the big field. I mean, you get any of the masters of our or like our or districts, that's the field that's the big size. And it seems to be, that's the one that's over the last few years just keeps moving along. And I don't know if there's any backfill. There was a race and Sean was at it in Folsom, which was uh, early part of the year. And it was really well attended, but there were no juniors. So you've got a lot of masters, a lot of others, but there's really no juniors to backfill. Are you getting any, any of these CBRs? Are they helping with the junior field or is you're just looking for everyone and anyone? And then we'll try to, you know, cause I mean, if we don't have juniors, you know, after a few years, it's going to be maybe void of anybody. Right. No, that's, but the BRP is actually bringing in everybody. So it is bringing some juniors. It's bringing all, all different, uh, you know, ages. But, yeah, no, we do offer two junior races a year, um, and I try to find some sponsors to, you know, pretty much pay for the sheriffs and the time, and I do a little proportion. Um, the two teams that have helped out this year was Impact Cycling and uh, Big Orange. They paid for that, so that way the juniors race for free. Um, and I'm trying to do that, but it's just – it is very difficult, you know, even to put it on their schedule, you know, Last weekend was, you know, we had maybe a total of 40. So there was, you know, uh, there's clubs that are even in Redlands. You know, your Deshaun Wilson's club. Nobody showed up yep. from his junior club. Nobody. Zero. Hmm. And he's got like 47 juniors. None wow. of them showed up. I was kind of, you know, Jeff uh, Shine with uh, Velosport. Tons of his riders were all there. But uh, we're, we're trying. 
But, I mean, you still have to make the effort to, you know, get the juniors out there. Yeah, yeah. Totally. it's kind of the same thing with women's racing. You know, we we definitely want <laughs> to support women's racing and we give equal prize lists, but they they have to support us with the numbers. Yeah, yeah you know, that, you gotta, you gotta get that, them to come out. Yeah, they're not gonna show, like the the you have a competing race this weekend and up here in the northern part, and they're not even having a women's field uh, represented because they don't have anybody that's really showing up. So it's kind of a yeah. you know apple and cart thing, which is you know they're they're not gonna show up because there's no race, but then when they do show up, they don't show up in numbers, so it's it's tough for that. What what are your um what other all all the categories that you have going on? Are you uh, pretty much representing everything this weekend, Sean? You know, we have everything but the juniors. Um, I would like to bring the juniors back uh, just for just from listening to this. And you you definitely hit on a point that if we don't support the junior racing um, mm -hmm. and that is part of the premier series, too. And, and um, I definitely want to maybe add the juniors in next year and give them a decent little nice little prize list, something to compete for. And um, but we have masters. We have women, two different women's categories. We have. Uh, three different masters. We have master three fours. We have the 55 and 45s together. We have a 35 plus, and then we have the two threes in the afternoon, and then we also have a fixie race at the very end of the program. A fixie? Well, that are you doing that yeah. one too? I saw you registering for quite a few. Are you registered for that one? You know, I did. Not. <laughs> I'm not doing that one. No, <laughs> I don't even have a fixie bike. <laughs> oh, uh, do, you use to, the, do you get to race in your races, Sean? Do you get to race in your races? Wow. You know what? That that's the reason I do this, and I this is my favorite race <laughs> of the year. So if I have to miss out on this, then what's the point? <laughs> that's why I have that's why I have a partner. I have I have two Jeff Princes doing this race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is part of the of a national event, is that right? They're the ARC, I believe. Yeah. So um, how that worked out is I contacted Chuck Hodge at USA Cycling, and I asked him what it would take to be on the ARC schedule, and he said. Well, you know, I, I, I remember your race from back in the day, and you guys already have a pedigree. Um, just fill out an application. We'll look at it, and if you meet the qualifications, we'll put you in and put you on the schedule. Um, so we're, I think us and San Dimas are the only ARCs in California right now. Um, most of them are PRC or the NRC. That, I think they're going back to the NRC this year. Mm. And um, but that's the stepping stone. I mean, it says it in the description. The ARC is the stepping stone to the NRC. And um, it's it's the whole purpose is to kind of bring in these new and up and coming races to kind of develop them and make them into something big. So what's your what's your kind of your goal and your plan for this race in the next few years? Well, my goal is I wanted to bring this race back to its original status level when we used to have Coors Light and Saturn and uh, these huge teams, Toyota United would come with their full teams and it was just a full on drag race and it was just a blast to watch and I want to, that's what I want to get back and I know pro racing in the United States isn't quite what it used to be but there's still quite a few big teams with you know Rally and United Healthcare um, I would like to get to that level, I don't know if that's possible but that's definitely my goal and what about you, Jeff? On San, yours, San Rafael has definitely elevated to that point. Yes, you know, they've, yes. they've proven that it can happen. Yeah. <clears throat> what about you, Jeff? On yours, we just would like to just kind of grow it, just uh, you know, a little bit more, um, just to keep it that fun family atmosphere. I don't have uh, uh, any uh, appetite to, and again, it's an industrial park, so I really can't kind of. I don't want to go to an ARC or a PRT or anything like that, but. Uh, um, the Ladera Ranch one that we're building up, I definitely would, am, a, am definitely thinking about moving that guy up um, as we grow that. Um, this year, my goal with that is for our kids' race. Um, after I get done teaching, I'm going to be able to go around the community. I want to see 200 little ones racing, is my goal. I want that community involved. And, you know, I like how Russ Ames with Dana Point Grand Prix. He built it around that kids' race, and that's the community really thrived on that. They oh, yeah, around. Tyler. They, Tyler, do you remember what how big that kids' race was at Burlingame? Uh, yeah, yeah. That has to be probably the biggest kids' race I've ever seen yeah. in my life. They must have had 300 kids. Yeah, the kids do get goal. excited to community, go out for those races. 
Yeah. And then they, the families stick around, they eat, then they watch the pro race. And then the, you know, the kids kind of grow up and then the kids go, Oh my gosh, I want to do that. And they might get the bug. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So I should, I should uh, remark on a few things and I appreciate both of you guys coming here. First of all, uh, Sean, you won last weekend. Is that correct? Down there at Jeff's race? I did. So what it was, it, well, I got fourth in the race, uh, but I won the 50 plus there was there was a combined category 45 and 50 and so i was the first 50 but i just couldn't get around tommy robles in that sprint but <laughs> it, it was a barn burner and then the 35 plus i got up there as well i think i got six but i ended up getting seven or second in the 40 plus because that was also a combined gotcha so it was and, fun and i had a good i had a good day well congratulations and, and is i'm sure there's still Thank time you. to is there a day of registration for your race as well yeah yeah, we will we'll have have a a fifteen dollar late fee, but we're kind of not we're doing a really we're not really um, charging a late fee until I think right up until the day of the event. So okay, yeah, I'm seeing here online that still pre red. Yeah, till the twelfth it looks like. Um, yeah. And where do they go? Where do they go for that, Sean? Where do they go for that information? <laughs> go, what do you mean? Bike find information on your race. He's, oh, he's bike pushing, reg, pushing yeah, bike yeah. dot com under. Or or the Sequoia Cycling Classic dot com, I think. Ursus Sorry, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying here. Yeah, I, I'm seeing it here. Bikereg dot com. You can do a slash Sequoia Classic uh, or just search in that area for Visalia. Yeah. It should bring it up. Uh, you can reg that way. You still have till what do we have here? Till the twelfth, uh, almost midnight on the twelfth Thursday. So right before you can still do it. We'll try to get this podcast out much. You know, probably tonight or tomorrow, so people can at least check that out. So I think all, I don't yeah, know, Sean, and if, about you. And if any teams, if any teams of five or more registered, we'll give five dollar off discount. Just have them email us, and um, we'll definitely uh, work out a discount code for anybody that brings five or more teammates. Wow, awesome. there you go. Um, and lastly, uh, I think all three of us may have been hooked by Gajuli at some point, and I was even his teammate. So I don't even know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. never hooked by Gad Julie. I oh. was hooked by Dave McCook. Oh, <laughs> I, well. wasn't, I wasn't hooked. I wasn't yeah. hooked by Gaz. Gaz came underneath my arm because he was so tiny. Well, he was small. And I was yeah. actually on the wheel of Jonas Carney, and he wanted Jonas's wheel. And oh, I yeah. was on it, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to do well at Redlands. And right around that little chicane, he comes in on there and just gets right underneath my elbow. And uh, – it just lifts me up and I go right off the road and that's all folks. <laughs> he, he was so fun to watch though. <laughs> yeah. He, he was a little crazy, but gosh, he was fun to watch. Yeah. Very much so. Uh, I appreciate it. it. You guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, good luck to the race out there this weekend, Sean. And uh, also to you, Jeff down there. We'll have to connect again and talk more uh, bike racing and promoting, but I appreciate it. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks guys.